I remember second grade specifically, I had a friend who had guidelines. If I wanted to be her friend, then I need to do this, this, and this. Don't sit by the teacher. Don't talk to the teacher. <laughs> because she didn't want me to be closer to the teacher than her. That specific instance was the first time that I remember wanting to please someone. And being okay with doing X, Y, Z in order to be her friend. In middle school, again, had a specific instance where I wanted to be loved and accepted. There was a field trip that my whole class went on and I just was telling jokes left and right, left and right. And I guess I was telling jokes too much. Some of my classmates had found me to be annoying. And so they had the secret word that they would say behind my back and they would all just say, if I was getting annoying, they would say, Fatima. When I found out, I was just completely mortified. I was so lost in trying to please other people, trying to be something I'm not, trying to fulfill other people's expectations, that I didn't have any appreciation for the things that I was. And when I didn't pray like her or worship like her or people didn't love me the way that they loved her or I didn't I wasn't always joyful like she was then I felt worthless I have come to this place where I was desiring some kind of community and I had even said something to my husband I said Jeff I I'm longing for community. It was a couple weeks later where I was at a birthday party and Holly approached me and she said, I'm doing this Bible study, but I have prayed about it and I would really love you to be a part of it. The fact that somebody prayed for me to be a part of something, chose me specifically just because they love me, that spoke to me and I, I said, absolutely, that's something I want to be a part of. At that time, I was a stay-at-home mom for my kids and comparing myself all the time to other moms who were staying at home and loving it, and I was struggling. Because I was that extrovert, because I was that outgoing person, I needed people. As soon as we started diving into our stories, you know, there would be times where Holly would stop us and she would want to know more about something. And they were questions that made me Eventually, they were the same questions because they were the same things that I was going through, the same wounds of going back to middle school, of feeling like, oh, I'm so annoying. Like having that tape play again and them being able to stop me and show me, no, you're not being annoying at all. Oh, okay, and then your, your shoulders relax a little bit and and then having that truth spoken to you. Holly would tell me time and time again the, tr the truth. God made you the way that you are for a reason. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. You are exactly who he wants you to be so that he can fulfill his purpose. And that was transformational for me. That was the moment when I was able to own all that I am all of my personality quirks and I never thought of myself as a daughter of the king or having authority over anything really besides students in a classroom. I was never the same again. That's kind of how I felt like after group. I just had this freedom and joy that you want to tell everybody around you. Everyone I love needs to experience this. Everyone needs to know how valuable they are in the eyes of their father. They need to know what kind of freedom comes from knowing you are loved, you are cared for, you are chosen, because Satan doesn't want that.